morning, everyone. Uh, we're from the Musical Playground team. My name is Mangal Dutt. I'm Mon Tran. I'm Kyosho. So the target audience for our project is stroke patients. So before getting into our project, I'd like to give you a little bit of a background on what a stroke is, what happens during a stroke, and some common effects of stroke. So a stroke occurs when blood flow is cut off to an area of the brain, and this can lead to cell hypoxia, so the cell not receiving enough oxygen, and this happens for a long enough time, the cell will eventually die. And depending on where the stroke occurs in the brain, some common effects include speech impairment, muscle weakness, and memory loss. And on the right, you can see a basic diagram of what a, what a stroke looks like. So this patient has a stroke or blood clot right here on the left side of their brain. Uh, for our project, we're focusing on strokes that occur in the prefrontal cortex of the brain, which is the front, and that part of the brain controls your motor movements. So we're targeting this second, this uh, second muscle weakness. For these kind of stroke patients, a common form of treatment is physical therapy. So they go to physical therapy to regain muscle strength, and the long-term goal is to uh, improve their <coughs> coordination, and this serves as a form of rehabilitation for them. So the, their goal of physical therapy is to develop arm control and coordination and to overcome their muscle spasticity. Um, as part of strokes, the muscles can spasm, they lose control, and uh, by going to physical therapy, they can re-exercise their muscles and hopefully regain connection between the brain and the muscle. So the goal for our project is to encourage patients to improve their limited arm motions through music. Music therapy has been shown throughout the years to be a hugely effective form of therapy in both children and adults. And our project objective is to develop the task-oriented learning game to be completed by uh, the support of the Winter Designer Group. And you'll see a demo of that later in our presentation. And because of our project, we have software and hardware components. So there are requirements on both sides. So on the performance side, this relates more to our software. So the software must be able to de define a desired movement performance for the patient. And according to how well they're doing, we distort a song and give them real-time music feedback. So they know as they're moving the device how well they're doing. Um, on the hardware side, because we're dealing with stroke patients and they have limited muscle control, they can't lift heavy objects. So this device must be portable and lightweight. Uh, lightweight meaning no more than one pound. And the max dimensions should be seven inch by three inch by two inch. Um, that's average hand size. So we're basing some, we're trying to make a small device that they can fit in the palm of their hand that can assist in their therapy. I'll turn it over to Hans. We'll talk about the technical aspects. So as you see, some of the technical work that we had to do, we had to research stroke therapy techniques to understand what was the most optimal movements that would help re rehabilitation. And then we also had to learn correlation and pattern recognition techniques to be able to compare the two sets of data together. And to tie these two ideas together, we have to, we have to learn Java, which none of us previously knew how to do, and, and learn how to access the different components of, of the Android phone. So just to give a quick uh, design process, this is the first prototype developed, which was developed by a group of us. What it does is, or the components actually are two, two Arduino circuit boards and an uh, adaptive wave shield, which plays the sounds. How it works is there's two buttons, as you can see from the picture, the red button for the therapist and the black button for the patient. The therapist would press the red button and record a motion, and how it calculates, how the Arduino calculates that is that over the total time period, it separates that code into four equal time intervals and takes the average acceleration, the average acceleration of those four and plays a tone that corresponds to each one. And uh, it does the same way with the patient. There, as you can see, there's many limitations. The main, main being the actual shape of the thing. You can see that's quite bulky and large in size. So, patients who have stroke, maybe it may be difficult to grasp the actual device itself. And to go onto the software, the Arduino RAM is very limited. It holds 256 kilobytes, which is actually not even enough to hold probably most of your average MP3 files on your phone for more than a minute. These lead the three three main problems. As you, as I told you, it plays music files are actually very large in size, so it plays tones because since there, there's not much memory, it plays tones. That's why uh, there's a lack of resolution because, as I told you, how the code separates the, the data points, it separates into four equal time intervals. It takes the average. So if the ther if the therapist plays and does a motion, and as long as the patient's motions, the average acceleration of motions are 
within an acceptable range, or read it as that it's okay, which you can see they don't even have to do the same motion, just the average acceleration has to correspond to it. And the feedback is not a real time range with this device, because the, right now the tones play after the, after the, their, the patient actually releases their button, which doesn't really give good feedback to the patient as how well they're doing and where they messed up. So our solution is we're transitioning from this device into an Android app. Many benefits you can see is Android app has a lot more RAM and this allows us to be able to com compute much more data and instead of averaging just those sets, we can actually take points from the, the better sampling rate. And many of the sensors that are there are provided, such as accelerometer and speakers, we just have to understand through the code how to access those. And we can use actually algorithm functions that are actually inherent in Java and embedded in Java, which allows us to do more complicated and have better correlation between the two. So, so far our cost <laughs> budget is zero dollars, as you see. Many of us have extra Android phones that we've been using, and the app that we use to compile and execute the code, is actually, is, which is Android Studio, is free and downloadable online. So, this, as you see what we've done this quarter, it's shown in the three tables here, <coughs> completed, and each show, each one of these show the activity and <coughs> the completed, the ending, and the improvised and feature test, it shows the pace that we've actually started on these things. So we, the approach we took was we picked individual things that might be useful for our end product and basically piece it together. <coughs> so things like we want to play audio and store things in real time, and also be able to store using motion. Uh, the main thing that we're currently working on is being able to play other music files instead of WAV files, because that's pretty much all we can do. We can use uh, open source decoders for MP3 files. Uh, for thread manipulation, we've actually figured that out pretty recently. And for filtering out gravity, we have a way, but we just didn't implement it into our prototype yet. As for future tasks, we're gonna, for the next quarter, we're actually going to look into making it more attractive to this audience. And maybe explore exploratory functionality. And also other distortion techniques. Instead of frequency, maybe we can store volume and we're gonna have haptic feedback. So as Kevin kind of pointed out, we are comparing acceleration peaks. So from these two graphs, you can see the blue curves are actually the predetermined inputs that we put into the code that we want the patient to be able to mimic, and these red curves are what the actual accelerometer is reading. So far, we're only doing the x-axis just to make sure that this, this code would actually work. So on the left, we have, you can see that the amplitude is not as high, so so that we're, the way we plan to distort this is maybe messing with the volume of the song itself. So since it's not as high, we're playing maybe thinking about lowering the volume to indicate to the user like, oh, I'm not moving fast or we're moving aggressively enough, and if it's higher, then that means that we'll probably play the song, the song louder. On the left, you can see how the amplitude matches up close enough. And we're still trying to figure out what is an acceptable range as more of like an error, fun, error percentage. And, but you can see that it's phase shifted. So here we're messing with the frequency of the song. So if they're moving too fast, we're thinking about speeding up the song. And if they're moving too slow, the song's going to be slowed down and slowed back up. Well, right now, this little image right here is the UI of the app right now. It works by first selecting the where we're able to maybe select the file path from a browser, you know, on your phones, and your people, there's like an app called My Files. We tried to implement the same thing, but we didn't have enough time. So right now, we have just two buttons right here, and these are pre-downloaded songs on the phone in WAV format. Basically, when you click on this, it allows you to get the file path, and then when you play it, when you press play, it actually creates a input stream to the file path, and reads it in, in buffers, chunk by chunk, and puts in an audio sync so that you can play. And when you press this button, it registers an accelerometer, which lets you go to another method to actually distort the frequency of the song. You just put it, you literally take an 
in X acceleration, and then we put it in a linear function, and it's, it's a frequency, yeah. And in terms of project value, since everybody has smartphones already, it's essentially low cost. Hundred people, you know, just download an app, pretty cheap or even free, depending on whatever price you select. And also, it's easily accessible since everybody already has one. Oh, shoot, I'm sorry, I got the mix up. Low cost as in, since it's already an app, but easily accessible since everybody already has a smartphone. And also, it's a more enjoyable and rewardable form of therapy since you're actually able to. Instead of someone telling you, oh, you know, we did this part wrong, we have another medium for music. Uh, we're actually going to show you the demo. Right now, this only, this, the way how we have it right now, we record, we, we have the one where we are able to record X acceleration and compare, but right now it's kind of buggy. So instead, we have the one right before it, which is shown on the screen. We're actually able to just record X acceleration and distort it. So, can you go back to the free side? Yeah. So, for example, we press this, it creates a bell pad, and then we press play, it plays a song, and then if you press the distort audio, it records the time of X acceleration. <laughs> right now it's only X, but as you can see, you know, you can just move it around and it already has enough function in order to read it. Yeah. I mean, that's pretty much it. Alright, and with that, that's the conclusion of our presentation. Thank you. <laughs>